Hello, welcome along to another tutorial from tipsquirrel.com. As always, I should remind you that I'm not a trainer, but I do like to pass on any tips and tricks that have helped me along my way. And this really is one of them. What we'll be talking about today is using layer masks for creative purposes rather than composite purposes. Now, when I mean composite, what I mean is by that is uh, we've got our picture here. But if uh, you look at the one that I've done underneath, you can see that I've just taken the bauble out and uh, we can put any background we like. So a composite, putting two pictures together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this layer here, which is the color layer, which is a, just a gradient on it. And this layer, which is our original picture of the Christmas tree with the Christmas bauble on it. Now you see I've put a mask on this layer just by clicking on this icon here, add a mask. And uh, what I can do now is I can start painting on this layer mask in black or white. Now black makes it see-through and white makes it non-see-through. So a quick example of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a gradient on there. A quick black to white gradient and you can see how we can see through it. So we can see through it more where it's black and then we can't see through it where it's white but all the way in between a varying degrees of opacity. Okay, so I'm going to control Z that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush and I've got a simple round brush here um, with a quite a large diameter. Let's go for quite a bigger one. And uh, I'm going to make it quite a solid one. Should have done that first. There we go. And what we can do now is we can paint on the layer mask. And I'm just putting spots down. You can see that we can see the background behind it. Now this doesn't look very nice, I know, but it's for demonstration purposes. But what's really cool about this is we can double click on this layer just where there's no writing and we can bring up the layer styles dialog box and we can add layer styles to our layer but it won't affect the layer mask so if i put in a drop shadow you can see now that it looks like i'm just going to click okay to get rid of the box you can look it looks like we've punched our way through a piece of card that had this picture on it okay on the layer mask again i'm going to control and backspace just to fill it completely with white which means it can't be seen through so I'm also going to just drag that, whoops, just drag the uh, FX, which was our um, layer effects, and just drop it into the trash can or rubbish bin, depending on which side of the Atlantic you're on. And that gets rid of that. Okay. So let's see what else we can do. Well, let's, we can take these shapes here. We'll take a rectangle. And I'm using the path selection here rather than the other two, just the middle one there. And I'm going to draw a path in there. And then if I go over to my paths, I can stroke that path with a brush. Uh, it wasn't very good, was it? Let's try again. Go into the brush, make sure I've got a decent enough brush. Make it a bit smaller, actually, and stroke that. One more try. Stroke that. And there we go. I'm going to click off the work path just so you can see what's going on. And what we've done there is we've just stroked the path with the brush in black and uh, it's put it on the layer mask if i double click there again and we put in our drop shadow you'll be able to see it a bit more clearly what's happened and that can make quite a nice frame obviously it's a bit chunky in this particular example but we could make it smaller perhaps and put a photograph in there of the family whatever we like okay again i'm going to get rid of that fx and again uh, control and backspace to get rid of the layer mask or, uh, or the black and fill it with white Okay, so let's have a look at some different brushes. We can use any brush we like. So let's get the star and uh, we'll keep the scatter in. We'll keep the, uh, yeah, we'll keep the counter nothing. Count jitter doesn't matter. Um, I definitely want to change the sizes a bit. Change that one down. And the angle can change this a little bit. Obviously they're, they're star, so it's not gonna make a great deal of difference. And now when I start painting on the layer mask with black, we we'll be able to see through where the stars have gone. So it's a bit like uh, confetti going around the outside. A nice border effect, I suppose. I'm overdoing it here. Now, the problem with this making it small brushes, and quite a lot of them, is if we try to do our layer style again, drop shadow, it's not going to look very nice at all. And in fact, it's going to look positively hideous. So we won't bother with that. Okay, so there you go. We've got a nice little effect going on there. Now, what's really cool? Let's take away, let's uh, control and backspace, the easiest way to do it. Let's uh, undo that because I did it on the layer rather than the layer mask. Control and backspace to get rid of the, the black on that again. Now I'm going to go back to the brushes 
and I'm going to select a nice big brush. There we go. And this time painting in black, what I'm going to do is just go around the outside of here. I'm thinking actually that's a bit hard edged. I'll control Z that and I am going to make it um, a lot softer. I'm going to do that through here, take the hardness right the way down and uh, let's try again. And it, yeah, that's a bit better. We're looking a bit more Christmassy because it gives us the impression that it's uh, perhaps snow or something around a window. There we go. And of course you, you can understand now where, where we could uh, use this as a vignette effect if the background was black. So we've got this kind of effect going on on the outside, but let's run a filter on it because we can run filters on our layer mask as well. So if I go filter and then go to brush strokes and spatter, and any second now the dialog box will come up. Any second now. Here we go. It's taking its time for some reason. And you can see it's added that to the layer mask. Click OK. I'm, I could change these, but I'm happy with that. And we get a nice little spattery effect around the outside. A bit more snowy. But why stop there? Let's have a real play with it. And you can see under the filter menu, we've got the liquify as well. So let's do a bit of liquifying. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this forward warp tool. And with a, quite a big brush, I'm just going to push these out like this. And I can have a really go to town on this. Now, this isn't going to end up very Christmassy, I shouldn't imagine. But, you know, we're having a bit of fun with it. I'm just going to keep doing these a bit and uh, maybe make a couple of points. OK, and we'll click OK with that and see what that does to our layer mask. And Oh, there we go. And we're looking a bit smoky now. But why stop there? Let's have a play. And if you've watched any of these before, you'll know that I am a bit of a fiddler and I will continue to play for as long as I can. I'm going to use this tool here, which is the twirl clockwise tool. Um, and as you can imagine, it twirls clockwise. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt key as well and that will turn it anti-clockwise so just normal anti-clockwise there we go let's have a bit of fun with it and we'll just go clicking around make it all nice and I always think of Nightmare Before Christmas when I see things like this it reminds me of that don't know why okay now let's click OK and we have a real smoky effect now We've got some uh, bits around the outside where we pushed in the layer mask and uh, we can now see through it if you didn't want to see that. If you press Alt and then click on the layer mask over in the layers palette, it brings up your layer mask and you can paint to your heart's content. So I'm going to reduce the brush size and uh, I can just paint those bits in if I wanted to, which I do, so I will. And just paint those in. Now the problem is there is that I'm going to ruin that bit, I think. No matter. It'll give me a chance to play a little bit more and I'll just reduce the brush size a bit there. Okay, and then clicking on the Alt key and uh, and clicking on the layer mask will bring us back. So there we go. You don't need to just use layer masks to do composites. You can also use them for creative purposes and you've got the whole filters at your disposal as well. Enjoy. If you'd like to know more about Photoshop, why not join us here? I'll go down to this one. I want to talk about me, JPEG. And there we are, tipsquirrel.com. And over there, you'll find all manner of stuff by some very talented authors. There's a list of the authors here. And uh, each one of those has a, their own little way of using Photoshop. They've got some great stuff, and I'm indebted to them all. So that's tipsquirrel.com. You can get hold of me at blog at tipsquirrel.com. You can also see that I'm on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash tipsquirrel forward to seeing you there.